This is Shyamdev Banerjee, co-founder and the CEO of the math company. I've been lucky enough to be in this space for the last two decades or so. And I can tell you that we are in a very exciting time as far as AI is concerned. Why so? Uh, if you look back, AI is nothing new, right? It is, a, it is an old discipline, at least 50, 60 years, you know, when AI you know, started, it germinated. But there are a few factors that has made the explosion happened, as we can see around us. One, this explosion or, or you know, kind of affordability of computing powers. This is, this is a big deal, right? Everything led by GPU, you know, your cloud computing. So that is one. Advancement in, in algorithms, deep learning or reinforcement learning is no longer a topic of research. It is something that are being used in regular daily applications, which is, which is great. The whole open source movement, you know, be it Python, be it Spark, you know, that, that's, that's big, that, that's very important. The other important factor is, you know, if you look at marketing, if you look at supply chain, if you look at operations, all the traditional methods, you know, strategies, I think they have all plateaued. So people are looking at AI as a way to establish industrial leadership. And, and there probably are, are a few more factors which are all coming together and, and making it very, very interesting. So if you think of what are some of the overarching, you know, I won't say trends, but things that are, that are you know, happening around us as far as AI is concerned, I see two broad uh, areas, right? One which I'll call as automation, and the other is what I'll call as democratization. Automation, you know, very clear, you know, with AutoML, there was a lot of, um, you know, hype around this, a lot of buzz around that. But today, if you look at something like an autocarrier, right, that has, you know, that can beat AutoML by far, and, and therefore taking this whole automation, you know, movement or that journey to a very different level, to a very different plane, it, it is no longer, you know, the, the RPAs of the world. It, it, is, it is true automation of a lot of decision making that is happening, right? So that is, that is one trend that I can talk about. Um, the other trend is about democratization. Um, you know, gone are the days where AI is the prerogative of a few pundits, right? I mean, it, it's, it's no longer necessary that you are the best of the best, you know, kind of you have a very deep research and understanding of these. There are available algorithms in the open source. And, you know, I'm talking to the right set of people. You know, if you look at GitHub or Azure or things like that, they're all making it, you know, kind of far more democratic. People can use ready-made algorithms to create state-of-the-art, say, a natural language processing for translation. So, so these are, you know, some of the important, uh, you know, events that are, you know, kind of guiding us in this space of AI. The other important trend or, or things that you're seeing is this whole democratization. You no longer need to be a pundit. You don't no longer need deep research in this space to be able to create applications, to be able to use AI in your field, right? Be it, be it science, be it retail, be it insurance, be it education, you know, be it music. There are a lot of interesting applications. But to do that, there are available algorithms out there. There are available frameworks that you can just pick and, and you know, write something which is really state of the art. For example, you can use something like a hugging face to use a, you know, to write a state of the art natural language processing algorithm for translations. So there are many examples like that which is making it great. Now let me talk to you about a few trends that we are seeing out there as far as AI is concerned. Now there are a lot of industry specific trends. I'm sure you all are aware of or this whole terms like fintech, edtech, um, you know, retail tech, health tech. Uh, but I'm no expert to talk about those industry trends. What I'm going to talk to you about are more horizontal trends or movements that I can very clearly see happening in front of us. AI is becoming more ubiquitous. Name a field, AI applications are there. In, the, in fact, the other day, I was looking at some application of AI in creating new fragrance. AI has made its inroad into cuisine, um, and, and so and so forth. But let me also point you towards the fact that China, for example, has a facial recognition system or facial recognition-based credit system. Now, what it means is that AI can no longer be 
an area where you know 70% accuracy is good, 75% is good, you have to be absolutely correct. Think of this credit system. What will happen if you are wrong? You know what happens to those 20-25% errors? You think of self-drive cars, right? What happens? You know even if there is point point zero five percent errors, you know, kind of it can lead to some catastrophic uh, outcome. It can lead to fatal event. So the focus is a lot more on improving that accuracy. And while doing that, the scrutiny is on the human AI interaction. There's a lot of focus on human in AI interaction and the role of human in shaping AI. I, th I think that is a big area that I am seeing happening. For example, there is a current trend or, or growing field called data ethnography, which look into biases that are induced into the information of the data by our own biases, by cognitive biases, by human behavior. And if we don't take care of that and use that to train our models, the results can be disastrous. I'll, I'll give you an example. There is something called a compass score, which is used primarily in the US and in some other parts of the world to predict repeat offense by uh, an offender who has been you know, kind of convicted, who has been caught. Now, it, it was found that because the way that data is collected through questionnaire by the assessing officer, there are you know, biases that are creeping in, which is resulting in some kind of a racial bias for the outcome or that score that is coming out and, and, and being used by the, you know, the judges and the judiciary. Now, this created a, a huge you know, noise and a lot of ruckus a few years back. Uh, but that has, you know, that has still not been corrected fully. You know, people are working towards that. So there are, are a lot of these areas where there are more focus is given that you know, is there inherent biases. And I'm not talking about algorithmic biases that can be treated using algorithm. This is something that needs to be treated with a lot of knowledge of the domain. It needs to be treated with knowledge of you know, ethnography, as, as, as you can think, as you can see from the name from understanding behavioral sciences, human behavior, our cognitive biases, so and so forth. So that is one very interesting area. The other area is what I'll call as micro-verticalization. Gone are the days when people are building, say, social media you know, applications, right? Um, it is not, not generic anymore. Um, I was looking at or evaluating a particular solution, I would say, not, not necessarily a product, which look into influencer marketing using LinkedIn for healthcare. So things have become so specific and you know the beauty is how do you take some of these specific application and tie them together. So that's another area. The third or probably the last thing that I would like to mention here is there is an increasing recognition of the fact that AI is a multidisciplinary field and while there is need for tight collaboration between a data scientist, a data engineer, uh, you know, production engineer and you know, different people. But the more of these capabilities that an individual can bring to the table, the more so-called full stack that one can become, uh, there is far more effectiveness in application of AI in various fields. So again, these are some of the horizontal, you know, broad trends that we are seeing, but there are lot of other exciting stuff, as you might already know, happening in a vertical specific industry. We have looked at what is AI, where is it today, you know, why or what are some of the driving factors. What does it mean for many of you out there, right, the, the how part of it? How do one keep learning? How do one really get themselves immersed into this space? I'm talking of existing practitioners. I'm also talking of people who are coming into this space or, or wanting to you know, move into this space. Now, the natural wisdom says, hey, you know, read a lot about what's happening, attend seminars, listen to, you know, see a lot of videos that are out there, fantastic ones, uh, listen to podcasts and, and so and so forth. But you know, what I would strongly recommend that there is no substitute of really doing something to learn. So what I mean by that, you know, develop your own, maybe a small prototype. And in the process, the learning that you get cannot be replaced. 
And the best news is that in today, with you know the presence of GitHub, Azure, you know, kind of helping you to create a personal cloud in a very inexpensive manner, uh, that is possible. So you know, kind of do something, develop a small prototype, and learn. Right? That that that's the first thing. Second thing is that you know, develop or build a group of like-minded people, not a big one, maybe three or four of you, and collaborate to build some of these prototypes or applications that I'm talking about. Each of you focusing on a different aspect and then learning from each other. So again, the focus is on, on doing, or doing the stuff and then learning. I think that is very, very important. And last, it might sound a little uber, but you, the only you know, asset that you can have is really a lot of curiosity. Have a lot of curiosity around what is happening, why it is happening, how it can be changed. And you'll see that, that urge to learn that what is out there, what is up there is, is happening. Now, before I conclude, there is one thing which I must talk about. That while I talked about a lot of great things happening around us, and we are in that age of AI, you know, I, I heard somebody saying, you know, let's go AI with AI, I mean, which means, you know, all in with artificial intelligence, right? I mean, it's well said. But you should also realize that while some of the bleeding edge, more tech driven, the new age companies have taken uh, or got a lot of advantage or, or have taken advantage of this whole AI revolution, the enterprises, the large enterprises of the world, the large pharmaceutical companies, the large retailers, the large CPG companies are still in that journey. There is a lot of value to be you know, kind of recognized out of it. So, so there is, honestly, there is a lot of opportunity. The space is changing very fast. So let's all get into that journey.